Hello there, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to give you an overview of all 18 ships in my Wonder 350 scale fleet. It's the January 2019 update, so uh, three more ships since I last did an update on the fleet about April time last year. Um, there's no easy way of saying this. I'm basically standing on a chair in the living room and that's the only way I can get all of these ships in into one sort of shot. Um, so what we'll do is we'll give you a quick run through of each of the ships pros and cons, what I like about them, why I bought them, and you can have a, a look and oogle at all the different ships. So let's get cracking. So first up we have the, slightly on its own, the only non-military ship. This is the Revel RMS Titanic um, from uh, about 1982. This kit, I got this a couple of years ago, I haven't quite finished it, but it's an awesome kit and it's really, really useful to be able to see how big the Titanic was, especially when you look at more modern carriers and battleships. Next to this we have the famous USS Enterprise CVN-65, the world's first nuclear powered supercarrier. Um, this is the second ship I built and um, I have to say I'm still absolutely in love with it. I'm really, really proud of everything I built on it. It took years and years to complete but I think the uh, effort well has paid off. Next to that we have the USS Nimitz. So this is the Nimitz 2027 version I've been uh, put a couple of videos on about a year or so ago. I haven't finished it yet, but I've been slide tracked, but um, it's uh, all got a self-contained scratch built hangar deck inside of it. And then I just need to seal it up, adding the lighting and uh, put the planes on and various photo edge parts. Easy peasy, eh? Next to that, we have the ship I'm working on at the moment. This is the USS Intrepid. Um, so it's all sealed up now. I prayed, sprayed the hull sides after the primer and put the uh, Mr. Hobby colour grey on the top and adding the detail for what will become the wooden sections but it's really really cool kit still um, you can see just how big it is even next to its much earlier sister the Nimitz. Next to that we have the USS Wasp so this is a kit I bought at the end of last year sort of second hand so in the process of stripping it back rebuilding it rest restoring it for want of a better term I'm going to build a waterline diorama very similar to the illustrious just above it um, so cut the bottom of the hull off which is no mean feat in its own but going to uh, paint it all up and then add some um, diorama show off the hovercraft or the LCACs and a few other smaller bits and bobs um, floating around and put some uh, lots and lots of aircraft on there including hopefully some F-35s. Next up we have the British HMS illustrious this is a airfix kit um, built a waterline diorama out of this. You can actually build it as a waterline version, you don't have to cut anything off which is quite useful. And um, really pleased with the way it came out. I took this over to uh, the model craft show in Milton Keynes last year. Didn't uh, get any prizes or nominations for it sadly, but I was really pleased to take it along. And next to that we have the, whoop, the USS New York. This is a San Antonio class LPD. Um, amphibious transport dock, so it's got its lovely well deck underneath with a little hovercraft LCSE poking out the back, a few aircraft on the back there. Really, really pleased with this the way it came out. It's really, really modern kit and it just looks a quantum leap different compared to the illustrious from many years before. Next we move over to the battleship collection. So first up is the HMS Prince of Wales, the Tammy kit which I finished a couple of weeks ago. Awesome kit, really really pleased with that with the Big Eddard photo etch set. And next to that, as you see the size of it, much bigger, was the um, Battleship Bismarck. This is uh, the kit that sort of started it all. I got this for a Christmas present, added a few bits of photo etch and really got me hooked on building one of the 350 scale ships. So I'm really pleased with the way this came out. And then next to that, you can see on the other side of the pond, about the same time, was the USS New Jersey, the Iowa class battleship. This is the Ravel Platinum version, so it's the modernised kit. Um, so it's got the helipad here and uh, various Tomahawk and CIWS weapon emplacements. But again, it's a fantastic kit. Wooden, wooden deck, metal barrels, tons and tons of photo etch. I think it's got more parts than the pretty much any other kit I've got actually, I think it is. Um, so it's really, really cool and I'm really pleased to have this. I think possibly slightly over weathered it, but um, each to their own, eh? Next we move over to the destroyers and cruisers. So we have the two 
Ticonderoga and Spruant Cruiser. I know I've got a, quite a few feedback uh, in the vast video I did in April last year about whether or not these are destroyers or cruisers, but I'm going off of Wikipedia, so correct me if I'm wrong, but there you go. But these are fantastic kits. They are very, very similar. I think the Spruant's hull was used as the de design for the Ticonderoga, actually, so it's a very similar hull. Uh, next we have the Arleigh Burke class destroyer, much more modern ship. This is the USS Hopper by Trumpeter. Again, tons of photo actually comes with the kit. Tons of extra detail you can add, and it's really, really decent sized kit. Highly recommended for a first time Wanda 350 scale modeler. And then moving over, we have the smaller ships. So we have the two littoral class vessels. We've got the Coronado at the top and the Freedom underneath it. Very, very cutting edge modern designs and absolutely fantastic. Really good starter kits actually, especially the Freedom, because both come with tons of parts, tons of photo etch, helicopters to go on the, on the deck there. And yeah, really, really easy and small and good to get some beginner practice on. Next up is the Academy Oliver Hazard Perry. So it's the smallest ship, almost, I think. Maybe not quite next to the Freedom, but um, yeah, a good sort of, um, Cold War era, 70s and 80s ship, little frigate. It's tiny, but it's really packed full of detail. Packs a lot of punch above its uh, its weight class, I have to say. Really, really pleased with the way this came out. And then lastly, we have the two submarines in the fleet. So at the top, we've got the Alpha Russian, and underneath it's a 688. I know I put the decal on wrong. This is the Los Angeles class hunter killer sub. So between the Los Angeles the Oliver Hazard Perry and the Enterprise up there. I'm only one ship away from having my own little reenactment of the Hunt for the Red October movie. Obviously, I need a 1 to 350 scale Red October submarine. So there you go. I thought I'd give you a quick overview. Um, far away any questions you may have. I'm having to step back ridiculously far to be able to get them all in shot. Don't think I can even do it. So, um, yeah, so this is the update for January. Um, the plan is to finish off the, where is it, finish off the Intrepid, then move on to the Wasp, and then move back to the Nimitz, and then hopefully, if some of the Patreon support comes through, and um, lots and lots of saving up, we'll be able to buy the, U, sorry, the Yamato Japanese battleship, so that's the next big purchase for the kit and the channel. So thank you for watching. Um, if you'd like to stay up to date with build progress on the Intrepid or any indeed any of these other ships, please hit that subscribe button, share with your friends, and um, yes, thank you very much for watching. All right then, thank you. Bye bye.